And welcome to Microbiology Monday. In this video, we're going to take a look at the parts of the compound microscope. So welcome to a new video in the series of microbiology. In this video, I want to take a look at the parts of a compound microscope. Now you might be thinking, this is boring or this is easy. Yes, yes, it is easy and it's guaranteed to be on uh, anatomy tests. It's guaranteed to be on biology tests. It's guaranteed to be on microbiology tests. So these are easy questions that you need to do and get right while you can get the easy questions right. So we're going to cover the parts of the compound microscope. First, let's define some terms here so we know what we're talking about. A light microscope is any kind of microscope that uses visible light to observe specimens. Then we have a compound microscope. Now, depending on who you read, they kind of combine these two terms together. Honestly, just go with it. All right, so we have the light microscope, which is any kind of microscope that uses visible light so you can observe the specimen, so you can see whatever it is you're looking at. The compound microscope is defined as two or more lenses or lens systems used to observe very small bodies. So that would be what we're talking about here. Then, of course, we have to talk about the possible inventor, and I say possible inventor of the compound microscope, was created back in the 1590s-ish by Zacharias Jensen. Now, this is a matter of debate amongst people who have no life, but uh, it's widely believed that Zachariah Jensen was the creator of the compound microscope. You're going to find it in your textbooks. It's probably the right answer on your exam, but if you hang around with microbiologists or people who, again, want to argue, like the comic book guy from The Simpsons, it's not exactly 100% sure, but moving on, already spent too much time on that. So the compound microscope, visible light passes through the specimen. The specimen is the thing that you're observing. So it's the, the bacteria, it's the scraping of the teeth, it's the protozoa, it's whatever you have on the slide. The light is refracted by the lens, magnifies the object. At best, the compound microscope can get to about 1,000 magnification, 1,000 X. So here are some additional terms that you should know. The first one is magnification. Magnification is defined as the ratio of the size of the image that you see to the actual size of the image. Don't you love it how science makes things more complicated than it needs to be? I mean, I could ask my kids, what does a magnifier do? And they can tell me, it makes things bigger, Dad. Right. Magnification is how much bigger we can make something compared to how small it actually is. So it's the ratio of how much bigger compared to how small that doohickey, that critter, that specimen is. The next one is resolution or resolving power. This is the ability to distinguish between two points at which they can both be seen separately rather than as one blob. Basically what we're talking about here is how fine of a detail can we get? How fuzzy is this object? And we talk about resolution every day. For example, you're watching me on some sort of device. You might be watching me on a computer screen. You might be watching me on a mobile device. You might be watching me on a television. You can be watching me anywhere. The resolution is how clear I'm coming in on your screen. So it's how fine of a details that you can make out on the specimen. So moving on to the actual components. Now again, remember you should know these because almost guaranteed they're going to be arrows pointed to a microscope or it's going to be labeled and you need to know these components. So the first one is the eyepiece or the ocular lens. This is the tube containing the lens through which you look into the microscope. The lens is usually 10x, 10 magnification, 10x, and sometimes you'll find them in 15x. The next device is the arm. The arm is basically the spine of the microscope. It's the basic frame of the microscope. The base, the body, and stages are all attached via the arm. So like I said, it's the spine, the backbone of the microscope. Now, if you're carrying the microscope, you need to hold on to this. You need to hold on to that arm as well as the base, which we'll talk about in a second. The next component is the nose piece. The nose piece is what contains the objectives. This is the thing that you spin around in order to change your objective. So the nose piece is what holds the objectives. Speaking of objectives, the objectives are the lenses closest to the specimen. So the objectives are the additional lenses. And usually you'll find between three to four objective lenses on the microscope. They almost always consist of 4X, 
10x, 40x, and 100x power. The shortest lens is the lowest power, while the longest lens has the greatest power. Now, hold on a second. I want you to think about this for a second. Let me grab my camera back here, okay? On this camera, I have my lens system. If I zoom it out, let's say an object is really far away, I'm going to use the zoom. So the lens, the magnification gets longer. So that means I'm getting closer to the object. It's more magnification, while a smaller lens has less magnification. So there you go. Let me put this back. Whee! All right, so now that we understand what our objectives are, let's take a look a little bit more at the color coding of them because they are color coded. Next time you take a look at a microscope, look for these. You have the 4X scanning objective. You have the 10X, which is considered a low power or low objective. You have the 40X, which is considered a high power or high objective. And then you have 100, which is the oil immersion. Yes, you need to know not just the magnification, but you need to know the names. I've seen these questions show up on exams where they'll say, what's the magnification of the scanning objective? 4X in this case, so there you go. Then we can compare, then we can combine into what we call total magnification. You have the objective lens, the magnification, the power, times the ocular lens, the magnification. So it's basically the objective times the ocular. As we said earlier, the ocular lens is typically 10x. This is the most common magnification. And then we have the 40x, the 100x, uh, 400x, and 1000x. Now remember, earlier we said that we have a 4x for objectives, 10x, 40x, and 100x. So we take those objective numbers and we times them by the 10 in that eyepiece. And that's how you wind up with your total magnification. Not hard math, but again, it will show up on an exam and those are easy points to miss if you're not paying attention. The next one is the adjustment knobs. Now we have two adjustment knobs. We have the gross adjustment knob, which does gross movement, big movement. This is what you lose, use, lose, use on your lowest power. This is what you're gonna scan around with. This is the big motions of that stage. Once you get them into focus and you go to a higher power and higher objective, then you're using the fine adjustment knob. The fine adjustment knob makes little changes in the focusing so you can get a better, sharper detail of whatever you're looking at. Now, you should not use the gross adjustment knob on high power. That's a no-no. So next one is the fixed stage, and you've heard me allude to this already. The fixed stage is the table or platform that you put your slide on. This is what's gonna hold your slide. The slide is held in place via a spring clip on most of the nicer microscopes. Now, little story. I was teaching this class to a high school um, years ago at anatomy class, and I was talking about the spring clip. So we had pre-made slides, and I'm walking around the room checking on people, making sure they're doing the lab right, and I hear a this grinding glass sound. I'm like, ah, what is that? Well, one of the students thought that you just, that you had to pick up the metal and pull it over the slide. I was like, no, 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 don't do that. You just put the specimen there, you put the slide there, and release gently the clip, and it will secure <laughs> the slide. You don't need to put it on top. The condenser, the condenser is the lens that directs light through the specimen. The lens is located above the disc or annular diaphragm, which concentrates, it'll focus the light passing through the opening in the stage and helps focus it on the specimen. This adjusts how much light gets through. Speaking of light, we have something called the illuminator. The illuminator is the source of light. This is where the light's coming from. And usually it's a, it's a light source. Usually it's a little bulb in there that projects the light. It's a steady light source used in place of mirrors. Now, if you do have a mirror, uh, there. You usually have some other light source going on, but um, it's been a long time since I've seen one using a mirror. Most of these that you're going to run into in college and high schools are going to have its own light source. Uh, if the light burns out, which they do happen on occasion, talk to your lab TA or your professor on where to find new light bulbs. The base, this is the metal structure, the metal element that makes up the foot of the microscope. It can house other parts of the microscope, including the illuminator. And you're going to carry a microscope by the arm 
and the base. And this is how you carry. You carry it into the body, and that's it's like carrying a football around the lab. You want to make sure it's pulled into the body nice and tight so nothing, it doesn't hit anything. Um, I've seen a student actually break a brand new microscope by holding it wrong and hitting a table with it. Yeah, parents were not happy with that bill. So really quick, here is a quick test for you. The answers are in the description down below. So you can pause it. We still have a little bit more left, but you can pause it right here if you want and give yourself a quick little test. All right. And moving on, we have other videos in the microbiology series that are already available on YouTube. We have what are microbes, we have binomial nomenclature, and we have bacterial basics. And coming up, we have videos coming around the corner really soon on the endoplasmic reticulum, anthrax, and I don't mean the band, the plague, and bacterial meningitis. Also on tap on my to-do list, we're gonna have videos on the size and shape of bacteria, bacterial growth stages, Lyme disease, and hepatitis. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you are studying microbiology, be sure to click that subscribe button, share it with your friends, and until later, have fun studying out there. Goodbye for now.